Hi, uh, in this video tutorial, we are going to talk about the spinal cord, the tracts in the spinal cord, their position, and what fibers go through what tracts, okay? So we won't discuss all the tracts, but some important ones. So here we draw a spinal cord. It has the posterior section, the lateral section, and the interior section, which we will refer to the posterior as a dorsal, the interior as a ventral. So here is your posterior or the dorsal column, okay, which is in the posterior side of the spinal cord. Now the posterior or the dorsal column has fibers going through it, the sacral will be most medial, right? And then the lumbar is being added lateral and the thoraces and cervicals more lateral. In this pattern, it goes up. So here we draw another diagram to show how these fibers go up. From the sacral segments or the fibers that's been received by the sacral segments will be added more medial in this track. And then the lumbar lateral to the sacral and then thoraces and this pattern you go up sacral lumbar thoraces and cervical this is how different fibers from the body is being added now the sacral and the lumbar together makes a fasciculus which is called the fasciculus gracilis like since there is G in the legs, I mean, in the spelling of legs. So remember from G, and the legs are great, so gracious, right? Remember from this. So then we have the fasciculus cuneatus that receives information from the upper body, upper limb and the trunk, okay? If we compare this with the lateral column and remember how they are being formed or the fibers go in what pattern so here we have the lateral column now if we draw another diagram to compare the lateral column first will be cervical the cervical fibers are being added medial to the lateral column okay so remember it's the opposite of the dorsal column so here then you have the thoracic fiber added laterally and now and then you have the lumbar fibers more lateral and the sacral fibers very lateral okay so they are very opposite to each other right and it has two uh tracks that we one is the dorsal column the posterior one and this one is the lateral is the spinothalamic track from the spinal cord to the thalamus is going. That's why the name is spinothalamic track. And it has a ventral, which is the interior uh, system as well. So the ventral spinothalamic track. And we have on the other side as well, the same tracks, the lateral spinothalamic track and the ventral spinothalamic track. As you see in the picture drawn. So these are the ascending tracks okay the blue ones now we draw the red one which is the descending track or the motor system and it, it will have the same pattern of the lateral spinothalamic track okay so sorry there is a c in the diagram so but it's not c it's s right there you go it has the ventral and the lateral it's the corticospinal track it's coming from the cortex to the spinal cord that's why called the name given corticospinal track and here if we draw the uh, sacral and lumbar together will make the fasciculus gracilis and the thoraces and the cervical fasciculus if we draw another diagram and summarize it will be the dorsal column okay and then you have your lateral corticospinal track. See, it's from the cortex to the spinal cord, corticospinal track. And it has a ventral and lateral tracks. So the lateral and the ventral 
corticospinal tract. Ventral means it's interior. So here is the lateral spinothalamic tract. See, from the spinal cord to the thalamus. So spinothalamic tract. And it has a ventral tract as well. So the ventral spinothalamic tract. Now, the blue ones are ascending tract. The red ones are descending. So the blue ones here, the sacra and the lumbar together makes fasciculus gracilis. Since G is in legs, if you write legs in spelling, it's G. So remember from G, the legs, gracilis, okay? And the other one is the fasciculus cuneatus formed by the cervical and thoracic fibers, and it receives information from the upper body. So the red one is the descending system, right? So the motor system to our body. The lateral uh, spinothalamic tract is the slow one, while the dorsal column is the fast because it's heavily myelinated and its velocity is high. See, it's heavy myelinated, while the lateral, the ventral lateral system is poorly myelinated. So it's low velocity system compared to that one. It's slow compared to the dorsal column. The information that's been received is pain, temperature, crude touch, sexual sensation, and tickling. All variety of uh, information is received by lateral spinothalamic tract, right? And the dorsal column, it receives information like vibration, proprioception, uh, position, uh, two-point discrimination. So it's it receives one kind of information, but what the other one receives very different variety of information. If we draw another diagram here and give example of a well-developed highway, and this highway is very myelinated, and it has less traffic, means less variety of information. So you will get from point A to B very fast. Here, if we draw another road, and it's a narrow road, um, there is a variety of information, which we will denote by variety of traffic here. And it's crowded, it's broken, means low myelinated. And if you um, since there is a different, so if you get from point A to B, it will take longer, so it's slow. Because here is a variety of traffic, like trucks, cycle, bicycle, people, all kind of traffic go through this road and makes it a variety of information, right? So this is how I remember. I hope it will help you as well to remember. And um, so the highway, high velocity, well myelinated and the low, low velocity. Okay. Thank you for watching and bye.